Hey everyone, Sketch here from 343 Industries in Redmond, Washington. And today I am joined by special guest, Joseph Staten, head of creative at 343 Industries, and newcomer, Sean Barron, head of Halo Infinite's live service. Guys, welcome, thanks for being here today. Thanks, Brian. I'm glad you got the hot seat, Sean, because you're the most important guest today. Yeah, feels good. Well, Sean, you've been at 343 for quite a while, but I think it's safe to say it's your first time on this side of the fence, certainly sure. in front of the camera. Um, so just help us understand a little bit about what you do and what your role is here on Halo Sure, sure, yeah. So, uh, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I've been with the franchise for over 10 years at this point. Um, most recently before you know, stepping into being the, the head of the live service, I was handling our player insights and our data analytics, uh, Halo player support uh, and safety. And so it was really focusing on getting that, that information, working closely with the community team on understanding player sentiment and reporting all those things. Um, but now um, with this role really focused on everything that Joseph's gameplay team is not focused on. So when you come into the free to play experience, uh, everything that is not maps, modes, or gameplay items mm -hmm. like sandbox or weapons, yep. that's my team. That's what we're working on. Uh, that's our focus. Uh, and we, we also drive a lot of the momentum around like planning of when we are doing seasons and how we're gonna be doing those. Excellent. I should also, I've gotta give you props. Very strong jacket game. Thank you, um, thank you. You know, thank you. I've, this is my uniform. I've had this, a lot of mileage in this jacket, but yeah. that, if I'm not mistaken, that is the brand new entrenched Halo Gear reward program it jacket. It is pretty good. Uh, that's the only prototype that exists, I'm told. And yep. uh, for it folks that aren't aware. It will disappear. If you complete the Entrenched event in Halo Infinite, you have the opportunity to get that cool collector's jacket. You do, um, so. and you should definitely finish the Entrenched event. Which you have, of course, right? You've already earned it. So. Well, I got 10 more. I'll catch up. I got 10 more ranks to go. Yeah. Well, there's two more weeks to come yep. up, so good news. You got will, opportunities there. I will there. absolutely finish But it. I do I, like the jacket. I'm a little bit jealous, but this one's got some nostalgic appeal to me. There's definitely some vintage to it. Yeah, it's been around the block. Guys, before we look ahead to the future, I think we just want to take a moment to acknowledge we've had some challenges since launch. Yeah. Um, you know, Joseph, last time you and I were here, we talked about a roadmap that had a season two that was longer than we or our players would have wanted, but it was important to us that we needed to take some time uh, and move a little slower then so we could ultimately move faster later. Yeah, that's exactly right. And we can feel the acceleration, which is good. We got a whole bunch of things to talk about today. Got a bunch of notes. It's going to be super fun to talk through. Uh, but there have been bright spots as well this year. Like I think of the co-op flight that we just did. A lot of people jumped into play, really positive reaction, helped us find a lot of good bugs before we launch it. So that was super exciting. We've gotten a couple drop pods out, um, some great quality of life improvements, but you're right, there's still a lot more work to do. And speaking of a lot more work to do, I think, you know, Sean, you and your team over the last few months have been pretty heads down behind the scenes, working on plans to sort of get us back in position and help us really achieve our vision and our players' vision for what they want out of Halo Infinite. Yeah. So we'd love to kind of hear from you on how are you thinking about the future of Infinite's live service? Sure. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so before we actually jump into that, I want to talk a little bit about how we thought about our priorities for the player first. Um, I think starting with a why you're doing things and why you care about those things is probably the most important thing that we could do as a team. And so for us, when we look at where we were going, what we want to achieve for this service, what we want to achieve for our loyal players, because we have a lot of them, it's super clear that our number one priority needs to be achieving seasonality. Now, what does that mean? It means we need to get our players more of what they want and we need to get, the, get it to them faster and with more consistency than we have. Two seasons a year doesn't cut it. It's just not going to cut it. That's not what our players deserve. It's not what they expect. It's not what our team wants to do. It's not what I want to do. Um, and so when we say a seasonality, like we want to get it under 20 weeks. We want to get it to 13 weeks. Ideally, we're doing four a year. We're not going to be there right away, but this is a service. And that is the number one priority that guides everything we do. It's like getting faster, getting that out there as quickly and consistently as we can. So that, that number one priority from a player perspective is achieving seasonality. And then we have these four other sort of player priorities, I would say, that, that dock under it, that guide how we think about what we're prioritizing and the features that we want to develop. And so some of those are you know, driven by um, what the team is really passionate about, but many of them are also being driven by what we very clearly see the players want and need from this experience and what the team wants to deliver for them right. because they care deeply about them. Yeah. So the first one, 
is uh, we believe our players deserve a Halo Infinite where it's infinitely rewarding. So players need to be able to feel rewarded for playing no matter what they play. The, the second one is actually personal and welcoming. So we believe that players feel need to be able to feel like they belong and can express their Halo identity in meaningful ways. Um, we also want an, ex an experience that's competitive and fair. We are a very competitive game. That's our DNA, right. that's who we are, right. right? You go back all the way to the very first Halo, right? Multiplayer, I mean, it's, it is a highly competitive game. And so we want an experience where players can expect that the game is competitive and fair and skill and teamwork should be a path to victory, right? The path to victory. Um, that doesn't mean abandoning social players. That's not what that means, but it is about fairness and competition. The last uh, priority is stable and high quality. Uh, we want players to expect a smooth quality experience with a very few technical issues. We've really fallen down there, I think, from a PC perspective. Um, we can do better. The team wants to do better, um, but that's just an example. This is the way that the team is thinking about it. The things that we're prioritizing, and I would say across the, the list that you see here, this is really what we want to deliver. Versions of improvements here, versions of features here, to make significant progress on all of these things by the end of 2023. The goal here really is to start a new dialogue with the community, to, to provide fewer promises and more information. Like that's the goal, right? And so. If we change this, and we might change it because it's a service and our priorities are gonna change based off of what we see happening with players, what players tell us they want, mm -hmm. what we know we can, we're excited about developing, new things that like maybe someone prototypes and we're like, yeah, let's put that in. Like those are gonna change some of this. But for right now, this is where we're going. And the goal is to get it done by the end of 2023. The first one, and we'll dive, dive into this a little bit more later, is match XP. Like that's one I'm really excited and that's about um, really rewarding players for playing Halo, right? And so uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Another one that I'm really excited about is uh, career rank. We're gonna get some of those in. I'm really excited by what I've seen from the community and their interest in our customization and the way that they're interested in using it and the things that they've been accepting of. And so we're never gonna abandon like the sort of canonical Halo look. That's that's never going to happen. Like we will always make Halo look like Halo, but we need to be able to support other like personal preferences, other identities that people want to show, right? And you see a lot of services doing this. This is this is the right way to do it because it should be a community. It's a social place, right? It is a place where you create and manifest your own identity. And so we want to create more distinctive options for customization, to give people more choices, more ways of getting things. And, and that's a big goal of ours. Um, another one that's really big for me is finding ways of, and this is the more intuitive and personal playlist options in UX. And so we're gonna talk, I think, a little bit later about custom game browser, but that's, that's, that's one really important thing. But how do we take you know, a challenge where we've got a lot of playlists and Halo has a long history of many options that you can play, right? Player choice is a big deal in Halo. How do you take that and combine it with all of the challenges that exist with skill-based matchmaking? or matchmaking in general. Like that's a big challenge. And so, um, you know, there's some ways that other games have done it, MCC's done it, some ways that are great. And so like, we want to do things like that. And that is a big deal for me. Um, but personal welcoming is not just about like customization, right? It's, it's also about player safety, right? We want players to feel safe. And so we gotta work on our, our safety. We gotta work on our uh, reporting systems, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and so then competitive and fair, like we, understand that there are moments in our gameplay when it's really hard to see uh, differences between what you're experiencing, uh, what you think you're experiencing and what the game is telling you is happening, right? And so I'm talking about what we call our UCN issues, right? Um, sort of M M MP gameplay performance issues. We, we really are gonna be focused on, on addressing those. We wanna increase ranked options for gameplay, um, server input and matchmaking options, and obviously anti-cheat. Like that's a big deal, especially on PC, like a huge deal. And then the, the big one that has like a lot of vague topics in it, right? Which is the stable and high quality. It, it is a pernicious problem. And it's, it's one of those things where you, you know, you, you put your finger in the dam and then another leak happens, right? And so I will say that we just had a, a good driver update um, on PC that actually addressed one of our biggest, our biggest crash bucket um, that we see uh, with Infinite. And so that's great, but we need to make a lot more progress there. Um, and it's not going to be at the speed people probably want. I know that's 
that's the way it's going to be because we have to get some stuff in the game to be able to like read it and, and, and make changes. But we know that that's an issue and we've got to go after that stability. We've got to go after cheating. Um, and then we've just got to improve the overall polish of the game. So the experience is, is where everybody here wants it to be, right? And what the players deserve. This is us trusting that sharing information like this is the right way to go. Just sharing it, what our priorities are. These priorities are driven by what we know is the right thing to do from a, from a gameplay perspective, from a, from a service perspective, from a, a team perspective, things that they're passionate about, but also heavily biased by what we know the players want. We have all these data inputs telling us these things. And so the goal here is to create that dialogue, first step, um, to show what we're working on and to update this frequently. Um, not hide it. We're not gonna, we shouldn't hide what we're working on. People need to know what they're, they should be excited for in the future. Uh, and this is just one part of it. Couldn't agree more, Sean. And I think, you know, just wanted to reiterate all the feedback that we've heard since launch. I understand folks maybe have been frustrated, but like it has never fallen on deaf ears. And I think most of what you have aligned to for now really does capture what we believe to be the highest priority, consistent yes. piece of feedback that we've yes. heard that are like foundationally important. Yes. Yeah, and I absolutely. would say it doesn't mean all the other stuff that people think would be nice to have someday doesn't matter, but we do have to kind of just get the foundation up to the level that we all want it to be before we can explore the other kind of nice to have aspects yep. of the game. Joseph, I did want to kind of throw to you, I know primarily we're discussing these priorities through the lens of our free to play multiplayer service, but safe to say this is bigger than that. This is a studio wide initiative and everyone's going after this. Yeah, that's right. I mean, not only to go after this list of things that you talked about, which we're fired up to do, but to work on experiences that we're not quite ready to talk about yet, we have had to make the difficult decision not to ship campaign split screen co-op and take the resources that we would use on that and go after this list and all these other things that we're going to talk about in just a sec. Let's talk about what is on the horizon and what we can look forward to, starting with our update that's coming out on November 8th, yep. which uh, safe to say this is our biggest, most robust update since launch. Yeah. But it's a little bit different than I think what players may be expecting. So totally. Sean, could you just, what is it? What should we expect? Yeah, again, I'll take a step back. When we were looking at how we could get to seasonality, we knew that if we tried to release season three on November 8th, when mm -hmm. season two ends, that we would really negatively impact our ability to be consistent the way we want to at a high level of quality for all of calendar year 23. Like we, knew, we, we saw that. But we also knew that it would be, we would be missing something for the community if we didn't release something great at that time. Um, so we looked at what we could do, what we, what we, were, what we wanted to be able to deliver. Um, and we want to be able to show a little bit of what the service is going to be like going forward. Uh, and uh, I think we came together with a, with a really great update. Um, so it's going to include the uh, Forge beta, uh, network campaign co-op, and campaign replay, uh, and then a whole bunch of uh, gameplay stuff and battle pass stuff and customization content uh, and match XP. So the winter update coming November 8th, um, big ticket items there, Joseph campaign co network co-op and mission replay. That's right, and oh. new achievements for campaign. That's right, several new achievements and for folks who maybe weren't in the flight, um, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be a great experience up to four Spartans, right? That's right, cross-platform. Um, and really, I mean, co-op is super fun, jumping in with four of your friends, three of your friends, and playing around in the open world and all through the missions. It's, it's just a lot, a lot of fun. So we're super excited for that to come out. And the mission replay feature in particular, a lot of cool collectibles and in infinite you may have missed. So you can finally go back and work on those. And one of my personal favorite elements uh, that the team implemented is kind of what we're calling no Spartan left behind. So That's right. the fact that your collectibles and your progression is shared. So pretty much like the lowest common denominator in your party, this game state will snap to them. And then anything you collect, everybody retains when you break apart into your own session. So it's not that situation where like only the host makes progress, um, which yeah. is super awesome. Yeah, that's right. So crank it up to legendary, turn on some skulls and, and get to it. So that's a big ticket item, obviously a long time in the making, looking forward to getting that out. Now, I have to also say, I'm incredibly excited about Forge. Yes. I mean, we're talking complete game changer here. Uh, I'm sure, like me, you've seen a lot of the stuff the community has unofficially already been doing with Forge over the last few months, and it is already blowing minds, safe to say. Yeah, I mean, the fact that people have put so much love and time into this when they're not even able to really save it, um, it's just, it's just in incredible. So getting the Forge beta out November 8th, along with the winter update, huge priority. I mean, 
the whole studio is vibrating with excitement to see what what all you start to create. It's it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I mean, we're not doing a huge Forge deep dive reveal here That's today, right. but I did want to just touch on it because you know, folks have just been very antsy about when and why aren't we discussing Forge, and it's coming. Um, and now we have a date, right? But yep. I, you know, it is safe to say exponentially more powerful than any Forge we've ever released, is my understanding. In fact, I mean, I'm gonna look at my notes here, but you know, for context, I didn't realize this, but Halo 5's Forge was no slouch either, and I believe the maximum object count was about 1,600. Halo Infinite supports upwards of 7,000 objects. So yeah. the, the things that you can do now are greater than ever. Yeah. Um, we also have some images we'll show, uh, some of the beauty corners, some of the improvements to lighting that we've seen. Yeah. I mean, the bar between a sort of a 343 crafted experience and a Forge experience is closer than it's ever been. Oh, for sure. And you can see in these beauty images the work that we've done internally to, to show off some of the potential. But looking at all the work that's already been done by the community, I mean, you can just see like you said, it's exponentially more more powerful, this version of a Forge. Also, you know, the team pointed out each of the canvases, uh, which we'll have, you know, a couple of those we're taking a look at right now, a variety of sort of biomes and aesthetics. They're about two times larger than That's right. yeah. prior canvases on average. Yep. Um, and then, you know, we've got really cool, exciting features, object scaling, which sounds like not a big deal, but, yeah. you know, keep in mind in the old Forge, you'd have to have, if you wanted to have different size blocks, you'd have to ship a, a, a fixed size of each block. That's right. Swelling that up, like that footprint becomes massive. Now I could have one block and I can infinitely scale it to any dimension I want to essentially, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, just that feature alone, it seems so small or simple when you talk about it, but just looking at the work the community has already done to take the primitives that we have to take the objects and reconfigure them into into things that we never imagined that people would re reconfigure them into just through object scaling. I mean, it just unlocks a whole bunch of creative potential and fun. So it's well, been great to see. I didn't expect to see somebody object scale a torso of a Spartan. I'm not sure if you've seen the giant <laughs> yeah, torsos yes. with the tiny yeah, legs, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I want to play that experience, whatever yeah. that is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, we have things like uh, node graph scripting. It's a little bit too deep for us to go into today, but safe to say it's a visual, incredibly powerful tool that allows people to script experiences, gameplay yep. rules. I've seen some cool stuff yep. on people combining weapon types together and yep. that's gonna be a game changer as well. Yeah, and don't forget that we also are shipping nav mesh support for Forge. So what that means is all the bots will be able to navigate through these, these levels for, for testing as well as for play. And that's also really, really exciting. So, I mean, we're just scratching the surface. I am excited to say that uh, in the coming weeks, you should, folks should stay tuned to Halo Waypoint. We're gonna be working with the Forge team to start to put together little feature ads to go deeper on some of the uh, specific new yeah. elements of Forge. Another great upside of Forge, uh, we obviously you can make maps with it, and what better way to showcase that than two brand new maps that we've actually created internally using Forge. That's right, uh, Argyle and Detachment, both of which were built in the Forge toolset. Uh, starting with Argyle, this is a larger footprint 4v4 arena map that's really meant to support stealthy play styles. It's got this cool cathedral ceiling, Bases have these diving boards, and we have dual grapple shot spawns at, at each base. And the hope here is that we're really gonna set up some fun, heroic super plays, some nice grapple shot swinging across the map. There are also dual sniper spawns to set up some really fun uh, sniping battles. And although this might look a little bit like Epitaph from Halo 3, it's not a remake of Epitaph, though the foreign art style is a little bit similar. Detachment, our second map for the winter update, CTF, really heavily influenced the design for this map. Um, contains a lot of really unique and emergent flag routes. We have a combination of a repulsor and a grapple shot spawn, and what that opens up is some really interesting routes that you really can't do just on, just on foot. There's a teleporter in detachment. I believe the first teleporter in a Halo Infinite map. Really adds some cool power plays and opens up other routes. And um, it's got an island in this map. We call it the Island of Power. It's where the uh, power weapons spawn. It's accessible through gravity launchers and the teleporter, but it's really this hotly contested, really fun power point in the map. These are playing great. We're play testing them a lot. They look beautiful. You can really see how well the new lighting shows up in Forge. They sound awesome too. So super excited to get these out into players' hands on November 8th with the winter update. And Sean, these, both these maps will be live in matchmaking, in matchmaking on November 8th. Yeah, I mean, it's really impressive what we can do with Forge and what Forge is going to enable the community to do. Well, if it's impressive what we can do, imagine what, what they can do. Right? Yeah, that's no, right. It's going to be amazing. So Joseph, I mean, the 
two new maps are going to be super exciting. The yeah. team's also got, I think, a new mode in the works as well, correct? That's right. So for the winter update, we're going to drop a new mode called Covert One Flag. Um, so Covert One Flag is based on traditional One Flag CTF modes, but we've got a twist. And what we're trying to do here is really embrace this, this fantasy, this play style of spies versus mercs. And what that means is that we have asymmetrical loadouts for both of the, the teams. The attacking team uh, that's going after the flag has a loadout of pulse carbines, sidekicks, and unlimited active camo. And the defending team that are fighting off the attackers, well, their loadout is commando rifles, energy swords, and unlimited threat sensors. It's super, super fun. This mode is round-based, so that gives each team a chance to both attack and defend to score rounds and win. Yeah, it's it definitely has that spy infiltration against a hardened team of defenders vibe. It's just a lot of fun, and I'm really glad that we're able to ship it on uh, November 8th. Are you a merc or a spy? I like both. I like the switch. I do. I'm going back and forth, but having those loadouts, it's just a fun, it's a fun twist and really makes it a, a really special mode. For sure. Now, Sean, we have more than just maps and modes, right? Um, tell, talk to us about uh, the winter updates 30 tier free battle pass and yeah. what that entails. Well, you kind of jumped the jumped the I spoiled, the, yeah, I spoiled the spoiled, spoiled my punchline, but that's fine. That's fine. It is free. So that's important. It is free. Uh, but what I think is more important is actually why it's free. Hmm. So we're releasing what we'll call the beta of match XP. And so since we launched Halo Infinite, one of the very first pieces of feedback was, hey, I want to be able to have rewards hmm based off of what I do and how I do in a match, right? And so we gave people those daily bonuses, we made some changes, and I think that relieves some of the pressure. But um, in, in this season, we're bringing a match XP, which is meant to not fully replace challenges, but to sort of become the main way that you're gonna progress through something like a battle pass. And it is meant to reward you specifically for playing Halo the way you wanna play it. So any mode you wanna play, um, you'll get uh, XP for the, basically the time that you're playing, but also how you do. Do you win? How are you? How do you personally do? That sort of stuff. That if impacts your total XP output from that match, and that's a big deal. But we actually aren't 100% sure that we're gonna nail that, right? We don't, but if we tie that to a battle pass and we try to charge people for it, it doesn't feel like the right thing to do. Um, and so we had a couple goals there with the battle pass where we wanted to say thank you to people because it matters a lot that people have stuck with us and we have such, such good fans. Um, we want to say thank you, but we also didn't want to have people pay for a battle pass where we're tuning, we're figuring out how the match XP system is going to work. Yeah. Also, we want to move people, our goal from the feedback is that we want to move people through battle passes faster now. We, we need to get that information, the data from the, the, the match XP beta to inform how we're going to do things in season three and beyond. Um, and so that's actually why, one of the reasons why that battle pass is free. And also one of the reasons why it's only 30 levels. Um, just, just to make sure that, you know, people feel the respect that we have for them and also so that we can get the data and then they can move through it quickly. Um, the cool thing about this battle pass, there are many cool things, but I mean, we're gonna be, we are gonna be giving people the uh, Mark V core. Um, there's gonna be a bunch of reach stuff that people have wanted for a while, including the CQC and CQB, as well as uh, maybe a, a knife you might attach to a, you know, a shoulder or something. Or a um, chest plate. Or a chest plate, you know, could be whatever you like. Um, it's full of really good content and I'm really excited about it. That'll be fun to look forward to. And then I also understand players can expect uh, two two fun events that we'll have as well. Also free, right? 10 tier events, yeah. um, one in December, one in January. Yeah, these are really, really fun. Um, I'm just really grateful that we're gonna have this opportunity to give this to the players um, and really excited about what it unlocks for us going forward. So that's the winter update again. We got Forge, Network co-op, mission replay, new maps. We got a new mode, a super fun reach themed free battle pass, couple free events. Match XP. Match XP beta. So direct response to player feedback there. Uh, one of our big steps on that journey. And that's all gonna be landing on November 8th. So after the winter update, early next year, we have season three. Joseph, what can you tell us about that? Yep, so season three, we're calling Echoes Within. And it continues the story of our lone wolf Spartans and the banished AI Eratus. And like we did in season two, we want to make sure our narrative is really just great context and flavor for all this fun stuff that we're doing with modes and events and the battle pass. Yeah. And then 
So I don't know if you said the date, but the date for season three, it's gonna be March 7th. And I like people to think of this season, like our players, they should think of this season as the beginning of what seasonality is. Mm -hmm. Like we should start getting to that goal of 13 week seasons. Not saying that's a 13 week season, but I'm saying this is the beginning. Right? What are we going to have from a content perspective? What are we going to have from a fixes perspective? What are we going to have from a narrative perspective? That sort of thing. That's what we want, right? This is going to have all of the meat on the bones there. Um, but yeah, to, we're going to have a, a, a free uh, and a paid track for a 100 tier battle pass. Uh, again, we're going to use that tuning information we got from the previous, you know, the winter update to make sure that we nail getting people moving through that battle pass quicker than they have in the past. Um, so that's going to be a part of it. It's going to have some really cool customization content in there based off of the uh, SPI armor core. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to have our events and we're going to have some really cool fracture events. Um, there is uh, some really cool, and again, are free. There's some cool customization in there. We're going to have custom game browser, which is a huge win, something that we definitely need to support all the stuff that's going to be happening in Forge. We're going to have more robust player reporting too. Um, I know that's the that's thing that you know might not be that exciting, but it's really important. Our players have asked for it, and it's mm. one of those things that like, hey, we gotta do this. So we're and gonna this is in-game in reporting. In-game reporting, yeah. So that's gonna be uh, for season three, yeah. And just super excited about being able to put this foot forward for the community. Now, obviously, a season means content as well, not yeah. just beyond the cosmetics and the future updates. We've got maps, we've got modes, we've got sandbox updates. Joseph, walk us through that. Yeah, so we've got two new maps for season three. We're not revealing the names of these maps yet. Uh, one is a BTB map and one is an arena map. Well, this is one of our biggest BTB maps yet. And fictionally, uh, this is a UNSC research site that's arrayed across this desert cliff where they're studying this mysterious Forerunner artifact. And to do that, they've actually dug into the cliffside and created this cavern system. And what that means is there are a lot of fun infantry routes in these caverns, through these tunnels. And on the outside, on the actual cliff, we've got a lot of fun vehicle routes as well. And this really is meant to be a map that embraces vehicular combat, flying vehicles, ground vehicles, big wide open spaces, and lots of vehicles available. And the second map, our arena map, fictionally, this is an Oni black site, and it's built into an ice bound mountaintop. This map looks amazing. It's got these, these snow, ice, really, really cool looking map. It's asymmetrical uh, and emphasizes environmental control, ownership power positions. This plays really great with Strongholds, King of the Hill, One Flag, CTF, and of course, Slayer. Uh, one thing that's unique about this map is it's got a gravity launcher that basically takes you all the way across the map. Super high risk, high reward, uh, but super fun element in that particular map. And we'll be talking more about those in the future. Now, what would some new maps be without some new modes? What's um, the multiplayer team cooking up for season three? So for season three, we're shipping two new modes, a VIP and Escalation. We also have some additions coming to Infinite Sandbox uh, with season three. Yep, we're working on one new weapon and one new piece of equipment, the Bandit Rifle and the Shroud Screen, which you may have seen some uh, video of that leak a little uh, recently, but I wanna go into detail on these so we're all on the same page about exactly how they work. Uh, so starting with the Bandit, this rifle feels like the Reach DMR, but the goal here was really to make it much more effective at close range. So we remove the scope. You can still zoom in using Smart Link in the same way you can zoom in using uh, with the pistol, but you can't be de-scoped. Super fun weapon, glad it's coming into the sandbox. And then we have the shroud screen. Think of the shroud screen like a 26th century high-tech smoke screen. And the goal of the shroud screen is to enable area denial. So what this means is it doesn't block grenades or projectiles. If you're inside the screen, you can't see out. If you're outside the screen, you can't see in. Players who are inside the shroud screen do not show up at all on radar, even when they're firing. It comes with two charges uh, off the equipment pad and can hold a maximum of four charges. Playing with this has been super fun. It sets up a whole new style of tactics, new style of play. Really can't wait to see this get into players' hands and see what they start doing with it. So there's a lot to look forward to uh, with season three when it arrives on March 7th. Yep. Uh, you know, in addition, just it goes without saying, each of our updates will also include a variety of bug fixes, quality of life improvements, and all the things that we're getting in through the Halo support site and the player feedback avenues. So yeah. we'll have more information, obviously, as we get closer, official patch notes and things like that. So lots to look forward to. Guys, appreciate your time today. Yeah. Uh, before we go, any final closing thoughts you'd like to share? Yeah. Um... 
I just wanted to express my gratitude to the players. Uh, you are some of the most dedicated fans and players that exist in gaming. Uh, and I am really excited for what we're going to be able to do for you uh, and the rest of this year and next year and beyond that. So just really, really grateful. Yeah, and I'll just echo your thank you, Sean, and also say I'm fired up. I can't wait to see all of you jump into co-op, see some speed runs, um, have Forge just light up and all the creativity begin for real with the beta. Um, it's just a really fun time. Uh, we're working hard and we can feel that momentum start to move and things start to accelerate. So thanks for your patience. Um, it's gonna be fun. Speaking of fun, we got a lot of excitement on the horizon uh, before November 8th in the winter update. For fans of competitive Halo, there's a lot of good HCS action to look forward to. In fact, this weekend, HCS event in Melbourne, Australia gets underway. Later in September, we've got the final event, North America in Orlando. And then, of course, that all culminates in the Halo World Championships here in Seattle in October. Be sure to follow at HCS on social. Head over to Halo Waypoint for more information, but it's going to be a tremendous conclusion of the season. And stay tuned to Halo Waypoint and Halo as well. We have a lot more to say and show about Forge in the weeks ahead and a lot more to talk about for the winter update as we get closer to that release on November 8th. So... On behalf of the entire studio, thank you. Thank you for playing. Thank you for your feedback. We're really excited to turn this corner. Can't wait to kick off the winter update on November 8th, and we'll see you soon.